What's going on guys and welcome back to the film room. Today we're going to be doing a little breakdown of Everson Griffin. We recently traded Griffin to the Detroit Lions for a 6th round pick. And a lot of people are saying, oh Detroit fleeced the Cowboys, oh Detroit got a steal. Uh, I'm here to tell you that I'm happy we even got a 6th for him. I don't know what Minnesota saw last year um, to let Griffin walk, but I wish we would have seen it not to sign him. I was really excited about this signing when I looked back at his Minnesota film, but when you watch and compare his Minnesota film to his Cowboys film, uh, it's just night and day, unfortunately. Getting into this first play, uh, one thing that was almost a patented move of Everson Griffin's was his spin move. He racked up sacks all throughout last year using it when on the Vikings. But for whatever reason, his technique and his efficiency in using it, it, it just was not clicking for him this season. Going to show you this play here, going to be against the Atlanta Falcons. He's going to be lined up over here on Jake Matthews, and he's going to try this spin move. And what I want to want what I want you guys to watch is his feet on the play when he does it. He's going to come out, get that plant foot, spin around, spin around, kind of choppy steps, eventually get knocked to the ground. And what I really want to point out is how many steps it takes to him takes for him to get through this. So he's going to come up with this right foot, going to stick it right here, left foot to spin, and his feet just seem kind of overlapping and slow feels like this there's just too many steps for this is for this to work effectively and that's why Jake Matthews is able to get back over when he should have been beat if Griffin had the technique and the speed that he did in displaying this move on the Vikings I mean just look at here let's count the exact number of steps that it takes him to get through this so we're gonna have come up gonna have plant one two three Four, and then five, he's going upfield and attacking Matt Ryan. Then coming over to this play here, same team going against Jake Matthews again, and he's going to use the same move. But here, I'll let it play out for you guys first before we start counting steps or anything like that. But just watch how much quicker it is for EG to get out of this. Oh, lag a little bit. I'll go back and gets home. So first, what I want to point out is how much quicker he gets into it. So a couple steps at the line, one, and he's already planting on that second step. He went upfield pretty far in that last play before he planted that right foot in the ground and uh, to initiate the move. So plants right there, then we have one, two, three, and he's attacking upfield and then gets home to Matt Ryan. Because he had two extra steps, Jake Matthews was able to recover in the last play and effectively shut down that pass rush. Now, I'd mentioned previously that it did take him a bit in that uh, first play I showed you guys to get into the pass rush. Of course, that's a little bit based on uh, the splits by the linemen, how the left tackle plays it, how uh, he's able to set it up, of course. So I'm going to show you a play that's a little more similar in that uh, this came last year when we played the Vikings in Sunday Night Football. And Griffin's going to come up, have a few more steps like he did in that first play, and then plant. However, I once again want you, to, want you guys to watch the steps he takes after the plant. I'm not kidding when it feels like he's literally been a step slower this year. We're going to come up. He's going to have his first plant right here, and then one Two, he's already turned around and attacking the quarterback. It really does feel like he is literally a step or two slower on this Cowboys team. Next point I'm wanting to hit on with Everson Griffin and how he has struggled with that star in his helmet is uh, setting the edge. I feel like he was often out of position or putting himself in bad spots and not doing what an edge defender should in setting the edge and being responsible for that. I'm going to show you these plays from last year in Minnesota where he seemed like this solid edge defender and especially so against the run where it is most viable. I'm going to have him come up, get position on the edge, and then crack down. Come up, get his position right here. 
and then crack down once he has that edge sealed off. For whatever reason, though, when on the Cowboys, Griffin struggled with setting the edge. Uh, he was often out of position, as I said, inside. And I don't know if that was necessarily that he was confused with scheme. We'll kind of get into a couple plays where he's a little bit confused and just looks lost in the field. But this play right here is just clearly putting himself out of position. He's going to swim inside that pulling guard. Instead of setting the edge, try attacking inside and allow the ball carrier to bounce it out. That's not his responsibility on that play. He needs to set the edge out here and force this ball back inside for linebackers and safeties to come down and make a play. I appreciate the effort and that he's trying to make a play, but at the end of the day, you have your job to do and you need to do it and it cost the Cowboys here in that he did not. Another play here where Griffin struggles in doing his job. So this time he at least gets there to set the edge, but he does not establish his position to contain the edge. Going to have Evan Ingram come on an end around here and this is Griffin's responsibility to cut this off on the outside and force the play back inside. At first, he does a good job at least reading this, gets up field. But for whatever reason, he does not hold his contain and lets Ingram swing outside of him. If he's able to force this play back inside like he should and actually get lined up with Griffin. See, Griffin's still got the outside edge by about two or three yards here. Or, uh, Ingram, excuse me, does based on where Griffin is lined up. And he's able to exploit that. Had Griffin kept shuffling himself upfield to match and be consistent to where Ingram is on the field, he would have been able to force this backside and Donovan Wilson would have had a chance at making a play. But rather, Griffin does not and gives up the touchdown. Last thing I wanted to hit on with Everson Griffin on the Cowboys is that he just looked uh, confused and lost at times. Uh, I'm going to show you this play here. I don't. He just kind of shuffles across the line. I don't know if this is some weird stunt. If for whatever reason he over here is responsible if Todd Gurley leaks out into the flat. I don't know, but just... Um, I, don't, I don't have an explanation, guys. I can sit here and... Uh, Try to act like I know what is going on in this play all day, but I really do not. I just don't know. I don't know what. I mean, it's hard to tell without knowing exactly what the play call is defensively. But you have to assume this cannot be right, right? <laughs> now, this play right here, I don't know if Everson Griffin thought he was supposed to have some sort of over under stunt here with Antoine Woods but for whatever reason he just attacks hard inside and uh, actually ends up doing the Browns a favor and practically taking Antoine Woods out of this play <laughs> yeah eventually even gets his hand up on uh, up on his shoulder pad there and pushes him over uh, yeah I I don't know this is just another example where Everson just kind of looks a little lost, not sure on what to do with his pass rush, where to go with it. Uh, there's no reason he should be attacking down the line of scrimmage like that. And uh, yeah, just a real easy pass protection play for the right tackle there. Uh, but yeah, guys, I really don't know what else to say about Everson Griffin from this season. I thought we had something, uh, something to be excited about back when we signed him. But I'm, uh, I'm glad we at least got a sixth-round pick out of it. I mean, if you're going to miss, you may as well get a draft pick out of it. And, hey, I'm pretty sure we got the likes of guys like Xavier Woods in the sixth round. So you never know. You never know. Maybe it could turn something good for us. But, yeah, just didn't work out at all, and I really don't think it's going to in Detroit for Everson Griffin either. I think his time as a productive pass rusher and playmaker, run stopper, ended last season in Minnesota. Well, I appreciate you guys stopping by and staying until the end. I want to thank you guys so much for helping me get my first video to hit 10,000 views. That's such a huge milestone for this channel, and I really appreciate all the support the channel has been getting. Also, since we hit 500 subs, I am going to be doing a jersey giveaway. So comment below if you're subbed with the jersey you would want, and I will be picking a winner after this weekend. It must be a Cowboys jersey. 
Also going to be doing a subscriber giveaway at 1,000 subs, so definitely don't miss out on that by not clicking that subscribe button. Lastly, check out our website at cowboysfilmroom.com and definitely give us a follow on Instagram and Twitter where we post anything from Cowboys highlights to news and game film analysis, really just anything Cowboys football, and it's a great way to keep up to date with the channel. Once again, thank you all for stopping by, and I'll see you guys in the next video.